good day good day everyone how are you guys i know that you're doing well right now so kumusta po tayong lahat and for today we'll be discussing about a very important topic pa rin po pagdating sa ating uh NCLEX and also our preparations our PNLE or even those who are preparing for the exams at the nursing school so this one guys is for all of you okay for today we'll be discussing about the concept of your parkinson's disease uh concept under your neuro under your medical surgical nursing or adult health nursing in the case you're preparing for the NCLEX okay so let's start about your parkinson's disease a very famous famous and sometimes it's a landmark case in your PNLE okay kapatid kapag sinabi nating parkinson's disease it's a chronic and progressive disorder so anong ibig sabihin ito one thing that should it should be coming off of our mind is that parkinson's disease is not an acute disease it does not happen overnight it's not an acute it's not even an emergency per se but later on as we go along with our symptoms we can see that sometimes now this will become an emergency but the disease process as a whole is a chronic and a progressive disorder so take note of the word progressive because yan palagi po ang tinatanong pagdating sa ating boards or even in the major exams that we have in the nursing school so kapag binasa mo po yung progressive chronic disorder Okay, one thing na dapat papasok kagad sa isipan natin, ah, this concept or this question must be asking about Parkinson's disease. Pangalawa, another thing kapatid is that you need to remember that this is an NCLEX and, and, and Philippine Nurse Licensure Examination favorite. So what I'm trying to say is that most of our examinations in the NCLEX will be asking about Parkinson's disease, not necessarily about the disease process, but of course about the management about safety, about uh, critical management, about real uh, case scenarios, hospital-based scenarios, okay? So again, this is a chronic and progressive disorder. Pangalawa, kapatid, dapat na malaman din natin that uh, the major problem that we have in your Parkinson's disease is the decreased dopamine level. So ngayon, ano kapatid, ano ngayon kung bakit uh, mahalaga no, nabantayin po natin ang ating dopamine levels so ang problema natin sa Parkinson's disease bumaba po ang ating dopamine levels yan ano ngayon we need to remember that your dopamine is the one that is a neurotransmitter that's responsible for the movement of your fine motors okay so ano yun kapatid kapag sinabi natin fine motors ito yung paggalaw ng ating mga uh, kamay yan yung mga fine motor movements ng ating katawan the specific and the finesse movements of our body Okay, particularly your neuromuscular and neuroskeletal. Okay, so dahil bumaba yung ating dopamine na siyang responsible for fine motor movements, so you need you need now to think, ah, magkakaroon tayo ng problema sa ating fine motor movements. Ganun lang siya kasimple. Aside from that, meron din tayong isang problema because ang pagbaba ng isang neurotransmitter ay siya namang pagtaas ng isa pa. Okay, what's that? There is an increased acetyl acetylcholine levels here. Ngayon, ano naman ang trabaho ng ating acetylcholine? You need to remember that your acetylcholine is the one that's responsible for involuntary motor movements and also your salivation. We need to take note of this. You put you put down everything here. You write down all of, all of those concepts na ibinababa po natin dito. Okay? So, now, we need to remember as well that Parkinson's disease is more common among males, okay? So it's more common among males specifically for ages 50 years old and above. So when you were asked kung kanino siya mas common, kung kanino siya or sino ang mas at risk, you should be answering males of more than 50 years old, okay? Now, kapatid, ano naman yung mga assessments na makikita natin? Again, go back to the concept na bumaba po yung ating dopamine dito. So, ano ngayon kung bumaba ang ating dopamine? One thing that should be coming off your mind is magkakaroon tayo ng slow movement. And we call that bradykinesia. So, kapatid, ang bradykinesia, pwede, siya, pwede pa siyang mag-progress, pwede pa grumabi yung ating slow movement. It may lead to what we call as your akinesia. Why? Because in early stages, your bradykinesia will manifest because it's an early sign. But later on, your bradykinesia may progress to akinesia or the absence or the total absence of your movement. And we need to remember that akinesia is already a late sign. Again, we need to think that your 
Parkinson's disease. It's not abrupt, it's not acute, but it's chronic and progressive. Okay, kapatid, another din na makikita natin is nagkakaroon ng stooped posture ang ating pasyente, which is also very, very common in your Parkinson's disease. Another also is your shuffling gait. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin shuffling gait, ano ang problema natin dito? Unstable ang gait po ng ating pasyente. Okay, so now, muscle rigidity will also manifest, which may lead to your stiffness. Kapatid, we need to remember this one. Bakit? So, we need to be thinking that your rigidity and stiffness, okay, will alter the activities of daily living ng iyong pasyente. Okay, so, ano ngayon? Okay, which is, may rigidity tayo, may stiffness tayo. We need to remember that this is greatest in the morning. So now, because it's greatest in the morning, one thing that should be coming off our mind now is that you should be managing it. And later on, isa-isahin po natin. Okay? So another is your dysarthria. So dysarthria means there's difficulty in speaking. Dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing. Again, it's because nagka-problema na po tayo sa ating mga muscles. Okay? Another as well, kapatid, is your drooling of saliva because again, nagkaroon na tayo ng increased salivation caused by the increase of your acetylcholine levels. Okay? Another also is nagkaroon tayo ng micrographia or the uh, micrographia means napakaliit po ng sulat kami ng ating pasyente. Mask-like face, bakit hindi na maigalaw ni pasyente yung kanyang muka. And also, we have this what we call as your tremors, which is very specific and pathognomonic class to your Parkinson's disease. Bakit? Ang klase po ng tremors natin dito is your pill-rolling tremors. It's like this. Okay? Para siyang nag-ganyan, nag, nag, nag-roll ng pill sa kanyang fingers. Okay? This is what we call as your pill-rolling tremors or resting tremors. Okay. So, we need to remember that in your muscle rigidity or the stiffness, Okay, the management that we should be having because it occurs in the morning, okay, you manage this one by giving your patient a warm bath, okay? And because all of these things happen, specifically in your shuffling gait, naninigas po si pasyente, you need to remember, okay, that priority here is the safety of the patient. And in fact, in your Parkinson's disease, one thing that you should be coming off your mind is that priority is safety. Now, Let's talk about the interventions. Ano nga ba yung magagawa natin kapag uh, sa pasyente natin no, ay meron ng Parkinson's disease? First, kapatid, pag-usapan natin are your medications. What are those medications that we're giving to our patient? Number one, we think of your... Ano nga bang naging problema natin? Yung problema natin, bumaba po ang ating dopamine levels. Okay? So, saan siya ginagawa? It actually, it is actually produced in your basal ganglia or the base of your brain. So now, kapatid, um, what we need to do is to increase your dopamine, okay? To increase your dopamine levels. So, ano nga ba ang group of medicines or medications na ibibigay natin sa pasyente? First, let's think of your dopaminergics. Kapatid, ang mga medicine po or ang mga drugs po na magpapataas po sa ating dopamine levels ay yung tinatawag natin dopaminergics. Okay, you write that down. Kapatid, what, that, what is the best example of your dopaminergic here? We think of your levodopa plus carbidopa. Okay, sulat mo. Levodopa plus carbidopa. Brand name po niyan is Cinemet. Kapatid, ano ang trabaho nito? It will increase your dopamine levels in the body. Okay? Particularly in the basal ganglia. Okay, kapatid, hindi siya magiging effective if we will be giving levodopa or carbid plus carbidopa Okay, or brand name Cinemet alone. So, we need to give another drug, which is your Entacapone. Now, your Entacapone naman, kapatid, it will increase the effectiveness of your Levodopa. So, we need to remember that one. Again, Levodopa plus Carbidopa, Cinemet. And then, we also give our patient Entacapone. Okay, so now, we need to consider these things when we are uh, giving your dopaminergics. First one, we need to avoid these very important things here. Okay, we need to avoid MAWIS or monoamine oxidase inhibitors at this time. Avoid tyramine-rich foods. Bakit kapatid? Itong dalawang to, it will cause your hypertensive crisis. Okay, if this will be taken together with your dopaminergics, we need to remember that one. 
Okay, also avoid vitamin B6 or pyridoxine. Bakit kapatid? This is an antagonist. Okay, to your dopaminergics. So, you write that down. Okay, so what are other considerations here? We need to remember that your common side effect of your dopaminergic kapatid or your cinemet is orthostatic hypotension. And then pwede rin magkaroon ng red-orange color urine. And we need to remember that your uh, the change of color in the urine is just but normal. Okay? So you write that down, kapatid. Okay. So another uh, intervention sa pwede din natin ibigay. Again, dalawa pa ang problema natin. Ang pagbaba ng ating dopamine. Okay? Which is kailangan natin siyang pataasin. Magbibigay po tayo ng dopaminergics in your cinemet. And then... Para mas maging malakas si Cinemet, kailangan po natin ng intakapon. Kapag dito here naman, isa pang problema natin ay ang masyadong mataas na acetylcholine. Okay, and we call those cholinergics. So dito, anong ibibigay natin? We give your anticholinergic. Okay, we give your patient again, your anticholinergic. So what are those drugs, kapatid? Okay, na anticholinergics. Okay, you think of your K-back. Can you think of your K-back? What are those? Cogentin, Akiniton, Benadryl, Artin, Chemadryl. Again, Cogentin, Akiniton, Benadryl, Artin, Chemadryl. Kapatid, anong magiging functions nito? So, it will act, kapatid, okay, by decreasing your salivation. Okay, so sa mga effect nito is the decrease of salivation and also is the decrease in the involuntary movement of your skeletal muscles. So, yan, kapatid. So, we need to remember that one. So, we need to focus on the salivation because the most important nursing consideration would follow. Kapatid, kapag nasobrahan din tayo sa anticholinergic at hindi natin na monitor si pasyente, it may lead also to our patient having this dry mouth, which is common side effect. Okay? So, thank you, Tops. Maraming salamat for being with me in the concept of your Parkinson's disease. Ang tabayan na po natin ng mga susunod na topic dito lamang po yan sa ating YouTube channel. Maraming salamat, Tops. Ingat. Hey everyone, Tops of the Day, of course. For today, we'll be discussing about the concept of your myasthenia gravis. This is one of the important concepts and disorders under your neurology nursing or adult health nursing. Okay, so... Just after the Parkinson's, we will be proceeding with your myasthenia and we'll be continuing with your multiple sclerosis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's start talking about this concept here. Class, kapag sinabi natin myasthenia gravis, the problem here compared to your Parkinson's disease is quite different. Okay, although when it comes to the, um, to the most evident and the, the highlight assessments or the signs and symptoms nagkakapareho sila kapatid but when it comes to your MG or myasthenia gravis it's quite different when it comes to cause okay so let's have first the description or the background of this disease okay first kapatid we need to consider and we need to remember that this is an autoimmune disorder kapag sinabi natin autoimmune disorder kapatid yung katawan mismo natin yung gumagawa ng disorder na ito. Okay? So, it means that it's not because you did something. It's not because you... Yes, there's these predisposing factors. But when we say autoimmune disorder, basically, kapatid, it's our own body. That's why it's autoimmune. Okay? Basically, it's the immune system. Okay? Or the substances that's within our body okay that's creating something that's not in order okay so when we say myasthenia gravis kapatid it is an autoimmune disorder okay it affects the immune system again because it is an autoimmune disorder and what happens here is that the immune system kapatid creates an antibody gumagawa ang katawan natin specifically the immune system okay it creates an antibody which attacks the acetylcholine receptors that we have in our body okay remember that your acetylcholine receptors or the acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter kapatid that's responsible for the involuntary movements for the salivation okay basically for the normal functions of your muscles pero dahil dito nagkakaroon ng problema okay dito what happens is that 
gumagawa ng antibody ang immune system natin at inaattacking acetylcholine receptors natin sa ating katawan. Okay, so basically magkakaroon ng disruption of the normal functioning okay, of the neuromuscular system. Now, another concept that we need to remember is that this is more common among females aging 20 to 40 years old. Okay, now let's try to have this one um, compared to the previous discussion that we had on the Parkinson's. Kapatid sa Parkinson's, ang problema is nagkaroon tayo ng mababang dopamine, okay, mababang dopamine production in the basal ganglia. Okay, it's an autoimmune disorder, okay, uh, the, the most evident and the most common description that we can have with your Parkinson's is that it's a chronic and it's a degenerative and it's a progressive disorder. And like here, it's an autoimmune disorder where the body creates an antibody and attacks the acetylcholine receptors. And it's more common on males, among males, especially those who ages beyond 50 years old. Okay, in my esteem, gravis kapatid, it's more common in females aging 20 to 40 years old. So that's a total difference, okay, from the two concepts. Now, another thing that you need to remember as well, kapatid, is that when we say myasthenia gravis, okay, it is also affecting the neuromuscular system natin. And along the way, we'll be talking about the weakness, weakness, and weakness. And that's totally naman the same when it comes to your Parkinson's disease. But in your Parkinson's disease, okay, it's because of the stiffness, it's because of the um, rigidity, but here... It's basically weakness per se. Okay? So now, kapatid, what are those things that we'll be seeing in our patients with myasthenia gravis? Okay, first is your ptosis. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin ptosis, this is now the dropping of the eyelid. Okay? Or basically, this what this is what's happening to those patients, kapatid, na patulog. It's like ptosis. Okay? The upper eyelid, the upper portion of the eyes. Okay, na kung saan nagkakaroon tayo, hindi na natin ako control that's what we call sertosis. Okay, so nagkakaroon din ng diplopia. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin diplopia, that's double visioning. Okay, and we all know that. Dysphagia difficulty in swallowing, just like in your Parkinson's. Okay, and remember that sertosis is always being asked in your um, NCLEX and PNLE. That, that's, a, that's an NCLEX and PNLE favorite. Again, diplopia is a double vision. And of course, fatigue. Okay, dahil nga inaatake ang ating acetylcholine receptors. So basically, nagkakaroon tayo ng muscle weakness. So madaling napapagod. Okay, easy fatigability. That's the right term there. Okay, nagkakaroon tayo ng easy fatigability dito sa atin pong um, myasthenia gravis. Another, you need to remember na nagkakaroon din si pasyente ng dysnia. Bakit? Because of the overexhaustion. Okay, because there's too much okay, effort na kailangan gawin niya. It's because of the fatigability na meron si pasyente. Kailangan niya mag-exhort okay, ng more and more and more oxygen. Okay, aside from that, remember that your um, respiratory system is also consist, cons, uh, consists also your um, musculoskeletal okay, frame. Okay, may frame po tayo sa ating pong rib cage. So, also, nagkakaroon din tayo ng weakness in the diaphragm as well in the muscular system or the muscles that assists in our breathing. Hence, nagkakaroon po tayo ng disnya. Okay, we need to remember that one, kapatid. Okay, so now you have disnya on your mind. So, what you need to remember is that priority airway. Okay, you need to prioritize your airway. And remember, of course, one of the assessments na makikita natin is muscle weakness. Again, it's because of the attacks that being attacks that being done on your um, acetylcholine receptors within your muscles. Okay, so let's continue doing this. What is the diagnosis? Well, there's a certain diagnosis that's being done, okay, on your myasthenia gravis, and that's what we call as your tensilon test. Why is it called tensilon? It's because of a certain drug that's being used as well. On this test so we call the drug edrophonium tensilon which is an anticholinesterase okay so the route of this one is intravenous again it's a test wherein 
kapatid gumagamit dito ng isang drug okay which we call as erythrophonium okay which is an anticholinist race okay interventions ano nga bang ginagawa natin sa pasyente kapatid na merong myasthenia gravis so okay let's talk about this one here so first is we give our medications what medications kapatid ang ginagamit natin we give corticosteroids Okay, which decreases the antibody. Again, alam natin ang yung corticosteroids, kapatid, nagpapababa yan ang ating immune system. So, it decreases the antibody. So, uh, example of a drug that's given uh, sa classification ng corticosteroids is your prednisone. You write that down. Another medication, kapatid, is nagbibigay din tayo ng anticholinesterase. Ang function naman nito, kapatid, is that it increases the muscle strength. Okay, again, it increases the muscle strength. So, sample of drug under your anticholinesterase classifications, that all of those drugs with, which ends in your stigmine, just like your neostigmine, your pheostigmine. Okay? So, remember these drugs. Okay, another, uh, med uh, I mean, another intervention that's also done in your myasthenia gravis is the plasmaparesis. So, kapatid, ang plasmaparesis naman, it's a procedure wherein the antibody is being removed from the blood. Okay, it's because nga uh, gumagawa ang katawan natin, no? ang immune system natin, ng certain antibody which attacks and gives a problem to our acetylcholine receptors. Okay, so we need to remember these nursing considerations. Firstly, the complications, kapatid, mayroong complications na dapat nating bantayan. First, is yung tinatawag natin myasthenic crisis. Okay? Kapag na-undermedicate ang ating pasyente, pwedeng magkaroon ng myasthenic crisis. Because we may presume na nag, you know, nagtitake na ng medication sa pasyente, yun pala, hindi sapat. It's not the right dose. So we always give the right dose to our patient to avoid the myasthenic crisis. So what are the symptoms of myasthenic crisis? All of those that we have laid down earlier in your assessments. Muscle weakness, it will become more and more and more extraneous and more dreadful to our patient. Okay? Upon the other hand, if we over-medicate our patient, cholinergic crisis will also happen. Okay? So, that's it for your myasthenia gravis, kapatid. I hope anipray na may tutunan, natutunan po tayo for today. Thank you, Tops, and have a good day. of the day everyone for this topic we will be having our concept of multiple sclerosis still one of the disorders under your neuro okay alam nyo kapatid ang multiple sclerosis na ito uh, this is actually comparable to the concepts of parkinson's and also our previous topic your myasthenia gravis okay at sa araw na ito ay pag-uusapan natin kung ano nga ba ang pagkakaiba at pagkakapareho nila to the previous two concepts that we have just tackled okay let's start this right here right now okay Class, kapag sinabi natin multiple sclerosis, this is also chronic and progressive. Just like the concept of your Parkinson's disease. We've tackled that ang Parkinson's kapatid, it does not happen in a very short period of time because it's chronic. Again, as we, uh, as we qualify chronic, ibig sabihin class, it happens okay, more than 6 months. Okay? Yun ang ating um, indicator na ang sakit ay nagiging chronic. Now, progressive naman kapatid, ibig sabihin, ang symptoms niya, may mga early symptoms or may mga early manifestations and then later on we'll be having these late manifestations of the multiple sclerosis. Another thing that we should be remembering about this one kapatid, it is an autoimmune disorder. So, ibig sabihin kapatid, because of the some predisposing factors, okay, our body, no, um, is, is the one making, kapatid, okay, the disorder itself. Okay, ang ating mismong katawan ang gumagawa ng disorder itself. Okay, or may mga factors. Because there, is a, there are some predisposing factors, okay, it later on reacts to these predisposing factors, thereby attacking itself. Okay, that's what we call, kaya siya tinatawag na autoimmune. Okay, so another kapatid, here, antibody attacks the myelin sheath. This is the main problem natin when it comes to multiple sclerosis. Now, let's compare it to your uh, myasthenia gravis. In myasthenia gravis, there's also the factor of antibody. However, the antibody in myasthenia gravis attacks, kapatid, okay, your acetylcholine receptors all throughout the body. 
here dito naman kapatid sa ating uh, multiple sclerosis, ang nagiging problema natin, the antibody attacks the myelin sheath, okay? Of the central nervous system, okay? Yun yung tinatawag nating demyelination. Yun yung tinatawag nating demyelination. Another concept then that we should know and another more important key information here is that it is more common among females just like your myste uh, myasthenia gravis unlike your Parkinson's disease that is more common among males and this is also common to ages of 20 until 40 years old. So this is more quite similar to your myasthenia gravis. Okay? So let's proceed. Again, let's try to analyze or let's try to know what are the manifestations or I mean the, the, the causes of your um, multiple sclerosis. What are those predisposing factors? Okay, that leads to your body creating this autoimmune something. Okay, so first let's talk about fatigue. So kapatid, fatigue po ang isa sa mga uh, causes or the predisposing factor kapatid kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng autoimmune reaction yung ating katawan leading to the damage or attacking of your myelin sheath which we call as your demyelination. Another kapatid is infection. Okay, another is temperature change or the extreme temperatures and also stress. So all of these things kapatid, these causes the exacerbation na tinatawag natin on your um, multiple sclerosis. Kapatid, alam nyo ba kapag sinabi natin sclerosis just like um, on other concepts, sclerosis is actually a medical term that's specific for hardening just like in your atherosclerosis. So ibig sabihin uh, tumitigas, there's plaque, okay, in your blood vessels. Just like also in the concept of your varicose veins. Isa sa mga management class, okay, in your varicosity sa mga paapo natin is ang tinatawag natin sclerotherapy to avoid the rupture of your varicose veins. So, ibig sabihin, patitigasin natin yung mga veins natin o yung mga varicosities natin para hindi siya mag-rupture which will be um, which will be avoiding class further complications related to hemorrhage, okay? So dito kapatid, these are the um, triggers to acute exacerbations, okay? And these are the triggers to the attacks. But again, I have, we need to remember that your, um, that your multiple sclerosis is autoimmune in nature which attacks your myelin sheath or yung tinatawag nating demyelination, okay? So let's now try to understand Let's now try to understand what are the assessments na makikita natin in your multiple sclerosis. First one, okay, mayroon tayong tinatawag na poor coordination, kapatid. Okay, now also the, we have this what we call as your charcoal stride and you need to write this down because this is the pathognomonic sign class for your multiple sclerosis. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin charcoal triad, that's a specific class dito sa inyo po, okay, multiple sclerosis and we need to remember your SIN or SIN mnemonics. What's that? First is your scanning speech. Okay, again, scanning speech. Isulat mo. Okay, number two, intentional tremors. Okay, and also your nystagmus. Okay, your nystagmus or your rapid eye movement. Ayan. Again, kapag sinabi natin kapatid ng multiple sclerosis, nandyan ang ating charcoal triad. Okay, which is your scanning speech, intentional tremors, and then your nystagmus. Now, kapatid, meron rin tayong difficulty in articulating words or tinatawag natin dysarthria. Okay, isulat niyo dysarthria. And also, meron tayong ataxia. Yan, ataxia now is a type of gait, kapatid, or type of walking no, due to poor coordination. Okay, also nagkakaroon tayo ng muscle spasticity and also bowel and bladder dysfunction. Bakit kapatid? This is because of the damage to the lumbar area. Okay, kapag may damage sa lumbar area, we need to remember automatically it's bowel and bladder dysfunction. Now, kapag meron naman tayong damage to the sacral area, magkakaroon tayo ng sexual dysfunction. For this one, decreased libido for the women and impotence for our Men. Yan po ang nangyayari sa atin. Okay? These are your assessments that's present in your multiple sclerosis. Because of the demyelination, that's why it's sometimes called as your demyelination disorder or demyelination syndrome. Okay? So now, 
let's try to talk about the, the interventions kapatid na ginagamit natin or ginagawa natin in your multiple sclerosis. First, we give your patient medications. So what are those medications na binibigay natin? First, it's because the antibody attacks our myelin sheath in the central nervous system. Ang gagawin natin kapatid is we will try to lower down the antibodies. Okay, by giving steroids. We need to remember that your steroids actually affects your immune system. So ganun po ang ginagawa. Okay, we give your patients corticosteroids to decrease the antibody. Also, we give your patient muscle relaxant. It's because of the um, increased spasticity na nangyayari sa ating uh, muscles. And also, like, just like in the symptoms of your ataxia, in your dysarthria, nagkakaroon ng poor coordination. So we need to relax and relax and relax the muscles of the body. So we give your patient muscle relaxant. And for your multiple sclerosis, one of the most example of your um, muscle relaxant that's given, we give baclofen to our patient. You write that down, kapatid, baclofen. Okay? It's a muscle relaxant given to decrease muscle spasm. Okay? You write that down, baclofen po ang binibigay nating medication. Okay, also avoid exacerbation. Okay? So you avoid fatigue. You avoid infection, you avoid uh, extreme temperature. So those are the things, kapatid, no? Okay? Na we should be avoiding to avoid exacerbation. Also, we need to prevent complications. Okay? We need to prevent complications just like your... Because it affects also your respiratory system. Because it also affects your um, muscle coordination. We need to prevent coordination. Uh, I mean, I mean, more complications, kapatid. So, dito, also, one of the priorities that we will be setting on our patient is safety. It's because of the poor coordination and attack siya. Okay? Of course, priority, safety. Now, also, we need to remember that we give our patients palliative management in the concept of your multiple sclerosis. So, ang approach po natin dito is very symptomatic. Kung ano po yung symptoms na pinapakita ng pasyente natin, we immediately give the management that's needed. Okay? So that's enough for me tonight, uh, guys. So see you again on our next topic as we go along. I think it would be for the concepts of your Alzheimer's, yung AMLS natin. Also, we'll be talking about your Guillain-Barre syndrome. Ingat! Kapatid, for today, and at this moment, we'll be discussing about trigeminal neuralgia, still under kapatid sa inyong neuro concepts and still under for your medical surgical nursing for the PNLE and also adult nursing or medical nursing for your NCLEX. So I hope everyone is doing well right now. So this one is actually one of the um, most important concepts that we'll be having for uh, neuro nursing. Okay, so let's, just dis let's start discussing here right now. So when we say trigeminal neuralgia, this is otherwise known as your tic doloro, okay? It is a sensory disorder of cranial nerve number five. Again, this is a sensory disorder of cranial nerve number five, and we need to remember that one. Kapatid, kapag sinabi nating uh, trigeminal neuralgia, it is, uh, I mean, it results from severe recurrent sharp facial pain along the trigeminal nerve. Okay, again, if you are forgetting your trigeminal nerve, it is a nerve, um, I mean, it is a cranial nerve that's responsible for your chewing. That's why whenever I teach this one, I always refer to this one as your trichuminal nerve. Okay, your trichuminal nerve because it's the nerve or the, it's the cranial nerve responsible for your chewing. Okay, and what are the possible assessments na makikita natin no, in your trigeminal neuralgia? Okay, so first is of course you think when you think of your neuralgia. So again, when whenever you see those suffixes alja, so it means kapatid and ibig sabihin niyan kapatid, it's pain just like your arthralgia, it's your joint pain or your otalgia, it's your ear pain. And now for your neuralgia, it's a pain in the nerve, okay? So what nerve is that? It's your cranial nerve number 5 or your trigeminal neuralgia. Okay, so one of the most um, dominant assessments that we can have and we can find in your trigeminal neuralgia is severe pain on your lips, on your gums, 
on your nose and including in your cheeks okay the the area around your cheeks okay again the severe pain kapatid no severe severe talaga severe pain on your lips gums nose and also in your cheeks okay so that's um trigeminal neuralgia we have your severe pain so what have caused no the severe pain uh, for us to have this condition right now so we can see that there are some causes and stimulants no why this pain why this severe pain occurs why this a uh, sudden um sensation of severe pain occurs because napaka sakit talaga no na experience ng pasyente natin or yung kliyente natin experiencing trigeminal neuralgia so first you think of just cold okay washing the face yung mga tao kapatid na nagwawash ng kalang face chewing that's why I told you earlier that trigeminal nerve is the ones responsible for chewing and also for food, fluids, and of course, this extreme temperature. Halimbawa, nung katapos mong uh, magpainit sa mukha, no? Halimbawa, those that you experience in your facial care, okay? In the facial, uh, sa mga spa, yun, yun na nakaka-experience ng uh, mainit and then nagta-transition tayo ng bigla, no? Sa malamig. Okay, those are extreme temperature and that can trigger our patient to have this trigeminal neuralgia. Okay, so what are the interventions that we can have? Again, you think of this pain, 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 pain. Man. What type of pain? It's cru- excruciating pain. It's actually very, very severe pain. Okay, so uh, let's talk about the interventions that we can have here. What are the possible interventions that we do? First, you instruct the patient to avoid hot or cold flu- foods and fluids okay so avoid also yung paggalaw ng pasyente sa kanyang mukha okay and avoid also those hot or cold foods or fluids okay so again tandaan po natin yan and also provide small feedings also avoid lang muna yung mga cold na mga soft uh, food halimbawa yung mga ice cream ganun okay bawal muna yun kapatid okay and also instruct the client to chew food on the unaffected side. So, saan natin yung nguyain, kapatid? It's on the unaffected side. Kung nasa right side yung ating affected, you put it on the left. Kapag nasa left naman, you put it in the right. Okay? So, again, instruct the client to chew food on the unaffected side. And that's very, very basic, kapatid. Okay, also administer, administer medications as prescribed, kapatid. You know what? The pain that we can have in your... Um, in your trigeminal neuralgia the, the the cause of this one is uh on the nerve no and this can be relieved by um also providing your patient some uh, highly or high doses of analgesics because um what we have in the book is that you give your patient acetaminophen and that's it okay Kap- kapatid bigyan mo ng acetaminophen si patient and then what's the most important um parameter that we should be reminding ourselves this time remember that your acetaminophen causes your liver damage kapag nag overdose tayo dyan, it might cause uh, liver damage so always watch your liver uh, parameters like bilirubin all of those know that um, gives us the status of your liver function okay liver function test okay so again acetaminophen you give or you prescribe i mean you give the prescribed acetaminophen and also uh, take note about um, having it no because it's hepatotoxic okay so it may cause hepatotoxicity to our patient okay so now what are the surgical interventions that we can have no there could be various actually interventions that could be done to the patient experiencing um, trigeminal neuralgia first kapatid yung tinatawag nating microvascular decompression kapatid when we say microvascular decompression it means that this procedure is actually a surgical relocation of the artery that compresses the trigeminal neuralgia. So, baka lang naman, no? That's why we call it microvascular decompression. Kasi, um, we will relocate now the artery that might have caused, no? The compression of the trigeminal nerve. Okay? Ganun lang yun. It's what we call as your microvascular decompression. Pangalawa is yung tinatawag nating radio frequency waveforms. Dito naman class, magkakaroon tayo or gagawa tayo ng lesions that provide relief of pain without comprising, uh, compromising touch or motor function. So, ito naman class, gagawa tayo ng mga lesions, no? So that 
maririli po ang pain ng uh, pasyente natin without compromising touch or motor functions. Another kapate dito, parati itong lumalabas no, sa mga talungan, rhizotomy. Okay ba no si rhizotomy? This is the resection of the root of the nerve to relieve pain. So again, just like in compartment syndrome, kung meron tayong tinatawag na fasciotomy, wherein we are uh, doing a resection in the fascia, dito naman kapate din yung trigeminal neuralgia, gumagawa tayo ng resection, okay, on the root of the nerve, and we call that rhizotomy, okay, to relieve pain. Okay, another also is your glycerol injection. Kapatid, ang ginagawa natin or ang motibo natin kung bakit tayo nag-glycerol nag injection is that this, this is, uh, this procedure actually destroys the myelinated fibers of the trigeminal nerve. So, para siyang um, ipapatayin natin no? or we will really destroy the fibers, no? the myelinated fibers in the trigeminal nerve, lalo-lalo na doon sa affected side. Okay, so that uh, the the problem or the decompression or the problem that we have or the patient experiencing in trigeminal neuralgia would be relieved at this time. But remember that in glycerol injection, it may take up to three weeks, okay, for pain to uh, subside or to be relieved, okay? So that's it, kapatid, for your trigeminal neuralgia. Thank you, Taps. Maraming salamat po sa inyo. Top of the morning, top of the day. I hope and I pray that everyone is doing well. Ingat. Magandang araw po. Good day, everyone. For today, we'll be discussing about the concept of your Bell's palsy, otherwise known as your facial paralysis. So still under the neuro series for your uh, NCM and also for your PNLE. Under pa rin po tayo sa neurology nursing in your um, medical surgical nursing and for those who are preparing for their NCLEX. This is adult health and of course also for your uh, management and care. Okay? So, Bell's palsy, kapatid. Anong abang Bell's palsy? Okay? So, from the word itself is facial paralysis. Okay? I know that you've been hearing about this um, concept. No? Alam ko na naririn na natin to. But here, we will try to review what are those things that are under the concept of your Bell's palsy, okay, the description, the causes, the management, uh, I mean the assessments, and also the management. Okay, so we'll start doing this right here, right now, kapatid. So, tandaan ninyo, when we say uh, class, when we say um, Bell's palsy or facial paralysis, okay, simple lang ang dapat nating tandaan. Nagkaroon dito ng lesion, okay? Saan po nagkaroon ng lesion or tumor? Simply in your cranial nerve number 7, otherwise known as your facial, okay? Facial nerve. And ang ating pong uh, facial nerve, this is responsible, kapatid, uh, for two major um, functions, okay? Cranial nerve number 7, kapatid, sabihin natin, okay, face, face, means taste, okay? Unang-una niyang trabaho, kapatid, is your sense of taste, okay? Also, it's responsible for smiling, for the movement of the eye, yan, for the sensation, uh, for the movement of the eye and the face, kapatid, and also for the sensation na meron tayo, sa, kapatid, sa ating mukha. Okay, dahil dito, nagka-problema po sa ating um, cranial nerve number 7, so alam na natin kung ano yung magiging uh, possible, no, na assessments or ating pong manifestations or signs and symptoms in your Bell's palsy. Okay, so now, what are the causes? Bakit nga ba nagkaroon ng lesion kapatid sa ating pong um, cranial nerve number 7? This could be because of these major, major causes. Okay, what are those? Infection kapatid. Okay, because of certain infection, because of trauma, because of hemorrhage. And ito, this has always been asked, meningitis kapatid. Because of meningitis, it's one of the uh, causes actually kung bakit nagkakaroon tayo ng lesion po sa atin pong cranial nerve number 7. Okay? Possible din po ang atin pong tumor. Okay? So, you need to write that down. Now, again, these are the causes. Infection, trauma, hemorrhage, meningitis, and also tumor. Okay, so what are the possible assessments na makikita natin kapatid in your patients experiencing um, Bell's palsy? So, what are those assessments? Number 1 unilateral po ang facial paralysis. Ibig sabihin kapatid, may paralysis dito pero hindi po sa buong mukha. Bagkos sa isang part lang po ng mukha ng ating pong pasyente. Okay? So, remember that one. What else? Okay? May flaccid facial muscles po tayo. So, ibig sabihin po, um, 
naninigas din po or uh, namamanhid po ang ating pong uh, one side of our of our uh, facial muscles because unilateral nga. Okay, ulitin po natin is unilateral. Also, kapatid, there is an inability to raise our eyebrows, to frown, to smile, or to close the eyelids, or puff out the cheeks. Kasi nga, kapatid, sabi ko sa inyo, one of the functions po ng ating facial nerve is the movement of the eyes, movement also of the eyebrows, movements of the uh, movements of the eyebrows, movements of the uh, facial muscles, the ability to smile, yun po yung nawawala, to close the eyelids, or to puff out the cheeks. Okay, so hindi po natin na wag nagagawa lahat po ng ito. So that's the problem now. So now, also the upward movement of the eye when attempting to close the eyelid is also lost. So tandaan po natin. Again, when we uh, enter the video, kapatid, we discussed na because ito yung uh, function ng ating pong um, cranial nerve number 7, then mostly, no, most of these functions, ito din yung mawawala, if not all. Okay, so that's it. Also, kapatid, again, dahil kapag sinabi po natin facial nerve, that's responsible for your taste. Face, taste. That's responsible for the sensation or the sense of taste. So, mawawala rin po yan. That's why nagkakaroon po tayo ng tinatawag nating agusia. Okay, or agusia. Okay, again, tandaan po natin why? Because this is an exam favorite. Okay, paborito po itong tinatanong po sa ating mga examination. So, again, we need to write that down. Again, nagkakaroon po ng adyusha or agyusha or the loss of taste. Yan. So, ngayon pag-usapan naman natin kapatid, if what are the interventions? Okay, what are those interventions na uh, mainam, no? Gawin po or dapat natin gawin in the case of your uh, Bell's palsy. Number one is to encourage facial paralysis. Bakit kapatid? Through facial par paralysis, we will be uh, avoiding the loss of muscle tone po ng ating muka. Again, that is to avoid the loss of muscle tone po ng ating muka. So, you encourage facial exercises. Okay? So, write that down. Also, provide face link as prescribed. Meron po yan yung mga face link po. Okay? We can provide that to our patient and also protect eye from dryness. So, alam mo na, you give your patient all of those uh, nilalagay po, lubricant, such as your uh, eye drops. Okay? So, you need to protect your eye from dryness. Okay? And also, promote frequent oral care. Yan. To avoid also infection. Bakit? Um, in, in, ang problema din po natin dito, kapatid, is that na wawalan po no, ng uh, muscle tone ng ating pong, sa labas po ng ating pong oral cavity. So, we, we are not able to move this. Okay? So, that's why we need to provide our patients uh, frequent oral care. Okay? So, remember that one. Another thing, kapatid, is that we also instruct the patient to chew. That is to chew on the, um, this is to chew on the um, unaffected side. Okay, so chew, to chew on the unaffected side, kapatid. Okay, so we need to remember that one. Maraming salamat, Caps, for joining me on the discussion po on your Bell's Palsy. And we'll continue for more and more videos. Just subscribe to my YouTube channel and also follow me on my Facebook page. But let's have amyotropic lateral sclerosis, otherwise known as your low grade disease. Okay, so caps kapag sinabi nating uh, amyotropic lateral sclerosis or ALS, otherwise known as your low grade syndrome, still this is part of your neuro. Okay, so otherwise known as low grade disease or syndrome, and you need to take note that simply asking if what is the other term for your ALS is already an exam favorite. So, we need to take note of that. Kapatid, kailangan maalala natin yan. Okay? So, it is a progressive rare and I need to highlight this one. It's an incurable degenerative disorder. Okay? Again, it's a progressive, very, very rare incurable. So, ibig sabihin walang gamot dito. Okay? It's also a degenerative uh, disorder which involves the motor system, kapatid. Okay? Yung simple paggalaw ng ating katawan. Okay? So, ito po yung inaatake ng ating uh, amyotropic lateral sclerosis. By the way, again and again and again, I would like to remind everyone that when we say sclerosis, 
there is hardening or there is stiffening or there is flaccidity. Okay? So, iyon pong ibig sabihin po ng sclerosis. Okay. So, dito, again, ALS is progressive rare incurable degenerative disorder which involves your motor system. And it is characterized, kapatid, by muscle weakness and atrophy. Again, kapag sinabi natin atrophy, this is the um, lessening in size. It, it could be in size, okay, of your muscle, okay? The loss of muscle tone of your muscles, okay? So, or the loss of tones of your muscles. So, kabalik taram po nito ang ating pong hypertrophy. So again, in your ALS, kapatid, it is characterized by muscle weakness and atrophy. That's why we call it ALS or your um, amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. Okay, so in here, kapatid, nati-develop din. Remember natin, okay, tandaan po natin, if lacid tetraplegia develops. So kapag sinabi po natin tetraplegia, kapatid, both the upper uh, upper uh, limbs and the lower limbs or the upper extremities and the lower extremities, kapatid, Okay, nagkakaroon po ng paralysis. Okay, flaccid paralysis. So we need to remember that one. Okay, so now the problem here or the highest priority gives us to think now that the amyotrophic lateral sclerosis may lead to pneumonia. Okay, which is more and more of concern now because it's dreadful kapag pinag-usapan na po natin ang respiratory system. Okay, so remember that your ALS may lead to pneumonia and death. Okay, now, again and again, no cure is known for this disease and management is symptomatic. Again, it's incurable, so no cure really is known to manage this disease and management is symptomatic. So the question is now, what have caused really? Okay, ano nga bang naging dahilan kung bakit nagkaroon tayo ng amyotrophic lateral sclerosis? Okay, considering that it's a rare um, disorder, that it's a rare um disorder involving the motor system of our body. So, ano nga bang naging cause kung bakit nagkaroon tayo nito, no? So, it is cited that excess glutamate kapatid has been the cause of our amyotrophic lateral sclerosis. So, this glutamate, it's a substance or it's a chemical that's responsible for relaying messages between the motor neurons. So, ngayon alam mo na, kapag makaroon ng problema, okay, in your ALS, nasira po ang ating motor system because of excess glutamate which is a res uh, substance responsible for rela relaying messages between the motor neurons. So dahil excess po nating glutamate, nagiging high plank. Okay, sumusobra. Okay, yung ating pong relaying of motor neurons. I mean, the relaying of messages to the motor neurons. Okay, so leading to flaccid type of paralysis which is hindi lang nag involve ng isang body part hindi lang nag involve ng hemiplegia or yung tinatawag natin the paralysis of one side of the body but it includes kapatid the entire body now okay so nagkakaroon po tayo ng tetraplegia again the cause here is because of your excess glutamate okay we need to remember this one now what are those assessments na makikita po natin na patient basic Okay, you think of na wala yung motor neuro, I mean the, the proper relaying of motor neurons. Now, our motor neurons is being attacked progressively and it's something that's incurable. So, you don't need to think of those assessments na makikita natin. Okay, so first priority po natin dito is respiratory difficulty. So, we need to remember that one. Fatigue while talking is also seen in your patients with ALS. Muscle weakness and atrophy, of course. Tongue atrophy, or we call it sometimes as your um, atrophic glucitis. Yan. Okay, nagkakaroon po tayo dito ng um, tongue atrophy, dysphagia, weakness of the hands and arms. Again, and fasciculations of the face. Yan. And also, uh, when we try to speak, it's more of the nasal voice, okay, nasal voice po, yung tipong parang may sipon, parang ganun, okay, nasal quality of speech. So, these are the set of assessments. So, of course, kapag sinabi po natin ALS, kapatid, our priority here would be respiratory system, okay? So, take note of that. Also, articulation difficulty or dysarthria is also um, evident in a patient with low-grade disease, okay? 
So now, what are your interventions? I've said this earlier that your interventions firstly should be primarily symptomatic. Okay, symptomatic management. And of course, our priority here would be your monitoring of respiratory status. And guys, of course, you need to prevent aspiration in a patient with ALS. That's a favorite PNLE, NCLEX, and even at nursing exam questions. Okay, so we need to remember that one. Prepare also respiratory support. So dapat nakahanda po yan. And assess for complications of immobility. Okay? And on, also, psychosocially, you need to address advanced directives as appropriate. Because again, as we tell, um, that your ALS is incurable. No known cure for this rare disease is known. Okay? So address advanced directives as appropriate or as necessary, as deemed appropriate or as necessary. And also provide client and family psychosocial support because there is what we call as your anticipatory grieving. So we need to remember that one. Okay, so thank you so much for being with me on this concept. See you guys on the next topic that we'll be having. Have a good day. And let's talk about your encephalitis. Okay, again, when you see those suffixes, itis, I know that you're immediately thinking about inflammation. And that's also true when it comes to your encephalitis, kapatid, because encephalitis is the inflammation of the brain parenchyma and the meninges. Okay, so this is not the inflammation mainly of your meninges because that's more of the meningitis, but this is the inflammation of the general or it affects the entirety of your central nervous system. So it, it affects the cerebrum, the brainstem, and also the cerebellum. So we need to remember this one again is the inflammation of the brain parenchyma and the meninges. And let's talk about the causes kung bakit nga ba nagkakaroon ng inflammation na ito. First, because of viral infection. And you need to write this down because your viral infection, so far as your encephalitis is concerned, is the most often cause of it. So again, you need to remember that your viral infection is the most common cause of your encephalitis. Okay? And you need also to think that bacterial infection may also be one of the causes, but it's not the cause itself. Okay? Bacterial causes, bacterial infection may also be there. Fungal infection may also be the cause. Parasitic infection may also be the cause. But again, going back to what's the most often cause, kapatid, is still your viral infection. Okay? And most especially your herpes or your herbs, mostly, kapatid, yun ang nagiging cause po ng ating encephalitis. Okay, the herpes type of your um, viral infection. Okay, so it's what we call as, actually as your herpes or herpes um, encephalitis. Now, so what are the possible assessments na makikita natin dito, kapatid? Okay, first, let's talk about your, it affects your central, your central nervous system. So it's expected that there would be an altered level of consciousness. So kapatid, you write, it da, that you write this down because it's mainly the... Uh, once it being that's being affected altered level of consciousness kasama dyan, kasama na dyan ang ating motor functions okay so those are uh, the most important thing that we should be thinking about okay also cold sores lesions is also there kapatid and ulcerations in the oral cavity why because it's itis 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 there is an inflammation of it kapatid so we need to remember this down okay so also there's an history there's a history of insect bites and swimming in fresh water. So mostly, yung mga tao po na nagkakaroon ng encephalitis, there are those people na nagkaroon kapatid ng history of insect bites and also swimming in fresh water. So you need to write that down. Expe uh, exposure to infectious diseases is also uh, possible, kapatid. So that's it. And also travel to areas where the disease is prevalent. That's why you need to check the history, the travel history of the patient. When was the last time na pumunta ang isang tao sa isang lugar na kung saan mataas po ang kaso no, ng encephalitis. So, you need to think about that one. Also, kapatid, pwede din pumasok sa ating mga assessment, kapatid. Nandiyan din ang fever, nausea, and vomiting. Magkakapatid po ang mga assessments na yan. And these two important things, two to three important things, you need to think about this one. First is your Koenig sign. Kapatid, kapag sinabi natin Koenig sign, okay, this is 
there is a resistance or pain during the extension of the patient's knees. Kapag in-extend po ang patient's knees, okay, there is a pain or resistance. Okay, so we need to remember this one. Another thing also is yung tinatawag po nating Brodzinski sign. Okay, so your Brodzinski sign is uh, when there is pain, when flexing the individual's neck or or dito yung head no while lying flat on their back so nagkakaroon po ng pain meron din pong resistance dito kapatid okay so we need to remember this one there's also nuchal rigidity and also signs of increased intracranial pressure okay so you write this down all of these things kapatid these are the assessments na makikita po natin in your encephalitis okay so we need to remember that your pathognomonic signs here are your kernigs your Brudzinski sign, your nuchal rigidity, and also, you think about the insect bites. When was the last time na nagpunta ng isang tao sa kung saan meron pong cases of encephalitis? Okay, especially of those that are a viral type. So now, kapatid, that we know the assessment, let's try to know what are the interventions. Ano ngayon ang gagawin natin for these patients? Number one, you monitor vital signs. Of course, this is very essential. And in monitoring vital signs, kapatid, you also assess for the level of consciousness using your Glasgow Coma Scale. Yan, so we need to remember this one. Universally, ito po yung ginagamit natin GCS. And monitoring vital signs, you also need, kapatid, to monitor the mental status or the neuro, uh, neuromuscular status of the patient. So assess for signs of ICP or the intracranial pressure, kapatid. Assist the client to turn cough and have a deep breath frequently so ayan and also we need to elevate the head of bed for 30 to 45 degrees okay why to avoid yan increased intracranial pressure so that's why we elevate the head kapatid okay of 30 to 45 degrees also assess for muscle and neuro neurological deficits so you also need to write this down and of course we give medication kapatid that's why we give medication and we give here a cyclover because we we always suspect or the most common or most often cause of your encephalitis is a viral type no it's the herpes type kapatid so you you write down a cyclover po ang binibigay po natin sa ating pasyente it's an it's an antiretroviral medication kapatid and this is the one that we are using in case of your encephalitis so you read that down, kapatid. Okay? So, initiate also rehabilitation as needed for motor dysfunction and also for deficits. Okay? So, that's it. Thank you, Caps. Maraming salamat for being with me sa ating discussion in the case of your encephalitis. And more and more videos are coming. Maraming salamat po. Everyone, this is Jun Lee Scali, your nursing buddy. Thank you so much for being with me today. And for today, we'll be discussing about the concept of West Nile virus infection. Still under your neuro nursing, we are still here helping the nurses of the future. Ayan. So for those na hindi pa po nakasubscribe sa ating YouTube channel and also hindi pa po nakatune in sa ating line sa Facebook and then sa ating TikTok, please do so po ngayon. Okay? So West Nile virus infection, still part of your neuro nursing still a continuation after we had the encephalitis now we are having the west nile virus infection kapatid so your west nile virus infection is a potentially serious illness affecting your central nervous system kapatid tandaan natin cns 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 we're talking about the brain and the spinal cord and that's it okay so it's a potentially serious illness affecting cns and from the word itself it's a virus infection but now we need to know where this is uh where is it coming from where is the virus coming from so we need to know that it's a viral infection that's due to a mosquito bite okay so this is due to a mosquito bite and we need to remember this one so just like you were just like your other mosquito bite causing um vi viral infection like your dengue so your west nile virus infection is also caused by your mosquito bite okay so where this virus where is this virus coming from it comes from the infected birds it's because when our mosquitoes you no know, try to mingle with these um 
uh, uh, infected birds, it's where the infection or the transmission of the virus occurs. Okay? So, remember that in three to four days, it's where our symptom starts to appear after the mosquito bite. So, after you've been bitten by this mosquito, infected with the virus, so we need to wait for three to five days before the symptoms appear. Okay? So, that's it, kapatid. So, we also need to remember that your neurological effects in your West Nile virus infection is or can be permanent, okay, or can be irreversible. So, we need to remember this one. Okay, so what are the possible assessments? Again, very CNS po ang ina-attack po natin, I mean, ang virus dito. So, mostly, um, most of your uh, cases in your West Nile virus infection are symptomatic, okay? And for mild symptoms, if the manifest of the, if the if the manifestation um, occurs, these are the mild symptoms that may appear. First, fever. Okay, uh, there could also be your headache, nausea and vomiting, swollen glands, also rash, which are located in the chest. It can be in your stomach or even at the back of the patient. Okay, now for your severe symptoms, you can have high fever, headache. Also, stiff neck or the knuckle rigidity. And also, you will have your neuromuscular um, manifestations such as disorientation, tremors, weakness, which are muscle weakness, and also vision loss, paralysis, seizures, and of course, coma. Okay, it can lead to coma. So, these are your severe symptoms that may appear in your West Nile virus infection. Okay, so what can be our interventions, kapatid? Ano nga ba ang pwede nating magawa dito? Of course, isaysay natin. For mostly, because of most of our, our cases in your West Nile virus infection, our um, cases are mostly asymptomatic up to mild, and rarely we have the more severe form or those patients manifesting severe infection. Okay, so for our intervention, it could, it could be supportive, okay? And no specific treatment is done for the virus. Okay, it's most, mostly su supportive. If what the patient is manifesting, so we manage it. If for fever, we give analgesics, um, antipyretics and analgesics for headache. Okay, we also uh, give other supportive management to our patients. Okay, so the most important thing to remember here is how to prevent. Okay, so how to prevent getting infected with West Nile virus infection. So we use insect repellents containing your DEET. So what's that DEET? It's diethyl, okay, diethyl olamide, okay? Yolamide, okay? So DEET. And also, kapatid, stay indoors at dusk and dawn when mosquitoes are most active. So this is the most important uh, health education that will be given to our patient, Okay? So that ends. Thank you, Kaps. Maraming salamat. Nursing body, helping the nurses of the future. Maraming salamat po. Araw po sa inyong lahat. At this point, this is Kaps about your concept meningitis. Ayan, it's one of the best concept at suking-suki pa rin sa ating mga examinations. Pagdating sa ating neuro, sa ating adult health nursing, sa NCLEX, at sa PNL, and even at your nursing school. So, dahil dito nababasa na naman natin ng ITs, I know, What's pondering on your mind is that we have an inflammation. At kapatid, hindi tayo nagkakamali dyan. Okay? So, kapag ganito kapatid ang usapin, huwag na nating papahirapan ang ating mga sarili. Because we know for a fact that kapag may itis is already inflammation. So, what we will be thinking about now is that there's an inflammation, there's a disruption of the functioning. Ang tanong na lang ngayon kung ano yung mga manifestations na mamamayani and what will be, okay, ano, what will be the interventions that we'll be having. Actually, our intervention is just based on the manifestations. It's just based on what have caused the disease at hindi po yun lumalabas sa konseptong ito. Okay, so let's start now uh, on our description of the disease. Kapatid, kapag sinabi nating um, meningitis, it is an inflammation of the arachnoid and pia matter of the brain and the spinal cord. Okay, parin-pareho din siya sa ating encephalitis, kapatid. And that's true and that's correct. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kapatid, that your, um, that your meningitis is also an inflammatory disease. Hindi tayo nagkakamali dyan, no? It's an inflammatory disease wherein uh, the central nervous system, to be specific, class the brain and the spinal cord, saan sa brain at sa spinal cord, sa ating arachnoid and pia matter, 
is inflamed po ang part ng brain natin dito. Okay? So, ano nga bang naging dahilan? Kapatid, simple lang isulat mo. Bacteria or virus that could be the cause. Okay? That could be the cause of our uh, meningitis. However, fungal and protozoal meningitis may also occur. So, hindi lang siya bacterial, hindi lang siya viral. At alam ko, minsan, no, or madalas, nakakarinig tayo, ah, bacterial meningitis. So, it is caused by a certain bacteria, no? Now, viral naman, yes, uh, commonly, narinig din natin to. And rarely po yung fungal at saka protozoal. But they can be causes, kapatid, tandaan natin. Yan. Okay? So now, what could be the predisposing factors? So let's discuss about your predisposing factors. Firstly, nagkaroon ng skull fracture. Tandaan nyo yan. Okay, so nagkaroon ng skull fracture. Um, nagkaroon ng infection. So that could be, okay, that could be um, a predisposing factor leading to your meningitis. Another is your brain or spinal injury. And that's correct, kapatid. Tandaan mo yan. Okay, brain or your spinal injury. Sinus infection or your upper respiratory tract infection. That's why, class, I'm going to highlight this one. Kapatid, kapag nagkakaroon ng upper respiratory tract infection, bantayin natin ng pasyente, lalo-lalo na sa ating pong mga pediatric patients. Okay? Tandaan natin to because your upper respiratory tract infection, class, is one of the leading causes, class, or predisposing factors towards your meningitis. So, isubulat mo yan. Okay, also the use of nasal sprays. Yan, hindi tayo masyado maingat no, sa paggamit ng ating nasal sprays. Nakokontaminate yan ng mga viruses at ang microorganisms, kapatid. Pinamamahayan yun ng mga bacteria class. It may lead to your meningitis. Tandaan mo yan. And of course, lahat ng to hindi mangyayari. Okay? Uh, all those cases were in nagkakaroon po tayo ng immunosuppression or suppress po ang ating immune system. Sa siya say, for example, for those patients, kapatid, na nagtitake ng ating pong corticosteroids or may mga immunosuppressive disorders. Okay? Sa siya say, for example, your HIV and AIDS. They're very, very prone to having meningitis. Isulat mo yan. Okay. So now, what is the way or what are the ways we use no to diagnose our Uh, meningitis. First, kapatid, ina-analyze po natin ang ating cerebrospinal fluid. Tandaan mo yan. CSF analysis, you write that down. Okay? Why do we do this? Bakit natin ginagawang CFS, CF, CSF analysis? To determine the type of meningitis, kapatid. So, probably ginagawa dyan ang C CNDS or the cultural sensitivity or we're determining whether it is a bacterial type or viral type. Okay? Isulat mo. Okay, how do we do that? We do that by CSF analysis. Ganito, kapatid. Okay? So, ang ating pong diagnosis na lalabas, kapatid, kapag may meningitis tayo, ganito, kapag cloudy ang CSF mo, kapag may increased protein sa CSF mo, kapag may increased WBC or leukocytosis sa CF, CSF mo, kapatid, Okay, you write that down. Okay, positive na tayo. Or pwede na tayong makapagsabi na may meningitis si patient po natin. Okay, another also is kung may decreased glucose count si patients. Why? Because the bacteria or the microorganism is actually consuming the glucose contents, kapatid, ng ating cerebrospinal fluid. So, tandaan po natin yan. Again, CSF is cloudy, increased protein. And then, increase din po ang WBC and then, may decrease glucose counts is because nga, kinoconsume po, kapatid. Okay? Ng ating pong microorganisms, kapatid, dyan. So now, how, how do we, how can we, um, what's the mode, mode of transmission of your meningitis? So, it occurs high in areas like uh, mga lugar na kung saan may high population density. So, anong mga limbawa nun, class? So, example, in college dormitories, sa ating pong mga dorm, sa mga paaralan, sa mga kolehiyo, no? sa mga nagbo-boarding house na kung saan there's, uh, halimbawa, no? yung mga bed spacer na lima, anim, tatlo, apat sila in the room. Okay, that's um, a area or that's an area na kung saan there's a high possibility, no? na we can acquire uh, meningitis. Another is sa mga presohan po or in the prisons. So, this is also common, kapatid. So, you write that down. Okay? So, ang mode of transmission natin kapag itanong, kapatid, it's direct contact. You write that down, direct contact or droplet. Okay? Tandaan po natin. Iyan. Okay? So, that's it, kapatid. So, what are the assessments, kapatid, na possible? Una, possibly class na magkaroon ng sudden onset of fever which is the most common symptom kapatid na makikita natin 
local rigidity or dito po yung tinatawag po natin stiff neck but it's more of the uh, more extensive type of your stiff neck this is local rigidity which is also most common symptom and mild lethargy which is a most common symptom kapatid kapag nakita po natin ang triad na ito sudden onset of fever local rigidity mild lethargy kapatid candidate na si pasyente natin for meningitis Mild lethargy, kapatid, you write that down. Why? Because, mostly, no? Nagkakaroon tayo ng sudden onset of fever. Mild lethargy and local rigidity. Eto po. Eto po ang madalas tinatanong. This triad, kapatid. Okay? So, another is altered LOC also. Photophobia. So, alam mo na. What type of room are you going to prepare? So, yung mga dim light or yung mga madidilim na room. So, you need to prepare those rooms. Okay? And we've also discussed about this one. your Koenig sign and then your Brudzinski sign. So, kapag sinabi natin Koenig sign, uulitan natin just like in your encephalitis, kapatid, there is a resistance or pain during extension of the patient's knees. And Brudzinski sign naman, kapatid, when there is pain, when flexing the individual's neck while lying flat on their back. Okay, positive din po ang ating pong red macular rash and also abdominal and chest pain. So, tandaan po natin yan. Okay? Your local rigidity, your Koenig sign, your Brzezinski sign, kapatid, are there. Okay? So, now, tandaan natin, by the way, let's go back. Your local rigidity, your Koenig sign, and Brzezinski sign, kapatid, is actually a sign, okay, of your um, irritability class that's happening class in your meninges. That's what we call as your signs of meningeal irritation. Okay, so you write that down. Your nuchal rigidity, your Koenig sign, and Brudzinski sign, ang ulitin po natin, that's a sign of your meningeal irritation. So, isubulat po natin yan. So, anong gagawin natin? First, you monitor vital signs and your neurostatus. Tandaan natin yan. Assess for increased ICP. Ayan. And also, kapatid, initiate seizure precautions. So, ito yung pinakamahalaga dito ha. You initiate seizure precautions. Alam natin yan. Okay, you always have to be ready with the airway support, kapatid. You always need to priority the safety of the patient. Okay, so you initiate procedure precautions. Administer antibiotics is prescribed. You write that down and also assess for meningeal irritation. Yun ay sinasabi ko yung tatlo. The knuckle rigidity, the curling sign, and also, kapatid, your Brudzinski's sign. Yan, maraming salamat, Caps. I hope and I pray that we've learned in your meningitis. See you guys. on our next uploads. Ingat po!